Let me show you how we turn the living room into a recording studio. What's going on everybody? It's your boy Jay Hemi Productions and we are back for part two of this series on how I built my DIY home studio. I hope you guys tuned in for part one of this video. This is kind of just a recap of what we ended up doing. We pretty much just started off building the wood frame of the vocal booth. Right now we are putting the last piece on that are meeting the two walls and uh, yeah next step is pretty much grabbing the drywall as you're about to see here shout out to my little nephew cole for holding the camera but uh yeah we get the drywall and then the insulation we're ready to go so this is the insulation we're going to be using um tomorrow when we put the drywall up as you can see you can read all the details there i'm not going to go in depth but yep yeah. so we're going to use get ready all right, now that we pretty much got all the drywall in the garage, we went ahead and brought a piece into the studio to see how it would fit up against the vocal booth. We thought it might fit up and down with one big piece, but it was a little too big. So now we're kind of arguing back and forth on which cut is going to save more material. We ended up figuring out an idea, so we went ahead and started cutting. I would definitely recommend you guys not cutting it on the back side of the drywall like we did right there. It is very time consuming and it hurts your knees. That's why I was wearing knee pads. Uh, in just a moment, you will see a very efficient way that we found out the hard way uh, to cut drywall. So now pretty much what we're doing is we're just lining up where we're gonna cut this drywall. But a big tip is get an X-Acto knife after you got your line, cut on the front side of the drywall, which is the white pretty part. Make a nice little line down it and then knee it from the back or if it's a small piece, you can hit it with your palms and it should split right open like how you saw my dad do it. You can go ahead and rewind it if you need to watch it again, but you just hit it right where you guys made that cut from the back side since you cut it from the front white side and it'll split right open very fast, super efficient. We used it on pretty much the rest of the process and that's how we were able to knock out these cuts a lot faster. And uh, yeah, so I'm pretty much screwing these in and getting in the side pieces. The side piece was pretty long and kind of hard to do it uh, for that um, method that I just mentioned. So because this piece was so long, I ended up just cutting it with a little angle grinder that we had um, and it was very fast. We did it outside because it's super dusty. So if you do it this way too, I would definitely recommend doing it outside or else you'll have to freaking have a fan in your room all day blowing that dust out. So anyways, you can see us, we put the last side piece in. I'm going ahead and screwing it down, making sure it's all tight. And uh, like you saw in the beginning of the video, we put that last stud on the side of the wall so that way we can screw the drywall into the very last stud. Um, so this is kind of just a better view of how it came out after putting the drywall up. This is only on the outside because now we have to cut the pieces to fit the inside and once we got those ready we will then insert all of the insulation and then place these pieces of drywall that we're cutting now all right so you can kind of see us just double checking our work making sure the pieces fit once they all fit we started to place the insulation if you're not too familiar with this stuff it kind of just stops the sound bleed from one room to another although this isn't the final soundproofing for a vocal booth there is a lot more foam that is added and needed to soundproof a vocal booth but this is just the start to stop the sound bleed from the control room going into the vocal booth while your artist is recording and uh, this is just another look of how it looks inside yeah all right guys so i started a time lapse of us uh, boarding up the inside of the vocal booth but my phone ended up dying we kind of soundproofed it inside the walls already and then we boarded them all up, nailed it down. It's looking real nice, it's huge in here. It's crazy, but it's coming together. Next thing we gotta do is put the door right here and uh, pretty much do the same thing. Seal up these little holes, soundproof it. Nail these boards onto it, the drywall, nail the drywall onto it, and then uh, 
yeah throw the window in there start designing can't wait coming together all right so you are currently seeing us in the old studio taking the door off of the vocal booth to put on the new vocal booth um, if you have not seen the old studio make sure to follow me right now on instagram in the description below that way you can see where we've come in the past couple of years to what you're seeing now it is a crazy change. Um, although this seems like real easy, we did have trouble with the door. It was hanging on one side for some odd reason, but we ended up figuring it out. So I forgot what day it is since we started this whole uh, vocal booth build, but you see the progression now. Uh, I forgot to film the part where we took the wire, this wire right here. So as you can see, we took this long XLR cable and another RCA cable for the headphones, these two and we uh fed them all the way underneath the carpet through here underneath these doors and all the way into the vocal booth all the way around this in here and now you can see where it comes out so this will eventually wrap around here come up onto the um microphone down here but i just got it wrapped all the way around make sure i got some extra slack and yeah it's coming out pretty good and I got a small time lapse of it, but we just finished installing the studio door as well for the vocal booth. We had taken this door off my previous vocal booth and installed it onto this new one since we're gonna no longer have that studio. So it was a long process to figure it out because we had some little issues up here at the top. It wasn't leveled right or something. So we got it though. It's all fixed. Everything closes correctly. It's smooth, ready to go. So for the next step, all we gotta do is uh, screw down the drywall for the front half, do it on the inside, and then we can start treating the vocal booth. We'll put the foam down, you know, we'll start setting up the microphone slowly but surely, and we'll get it sounding real nice and start designing it pretty much. So I'm excited, can't wait. Oh, and I also can't forget about the window. Right now, we do not have the window in there. We accidentally stepped on it and uh, it cracked. So we got a new one I'm about to, put that in there as well we got to pick up the trim at home depot we're gonna have a nice wood trim like previous and it's gonna look real cool so i'm gonna keep the outside design a little secret for you guys until the end i think or at least until i start to work on it so i can't wait for you guys to see that i'm excited stay tuned If you're cutting drywall, we ended up finding out a real easy way to do that. Instead of cutting it with like some saw, you know, all the way down or a big drill, a real simple way is you just get like a, you know, exacto knife or exacto type of blade. Once you make your line on where you want to cut on the front side, the front side that's going to be on the outside is normally white. The back side has like the cardboard brown on it. So on the front side, on the white side, you draw your line and then you're going to just cut a nice little kind of medium sized depth, nice line with the exacto knife on your measurement where you need it to be cut. So I'm just gonna go quick on the white part on the top. Again, it doesn't have to be too deep. And then all you have to do, if it's a big piece, you can knee it from the back. Uh, but here, I'm just gonna hit it underneath and push it from the top kind of like this. And it should just snap real easily. Watch. Three, two, one. Uh, actually this way. Wow. Boom. It snaps off and then all you have to do is go from the back where it kind of corners at. You just put your exacto knife in there right in the corner and just slide it clean. Nice easy cut. I'm going to do that here. <laughs> But uh, let me bring this. As you can see, it's a nice, just clean cut. Not too, this is just the paper back here. You know what I mean? But other than that, the cut is real, real clean, real simple. And uh, 
it's a lot less work compared to whatever you might be doing. So there's just a quick tip if you gotta cut a lot of drywall. All right, so I hope you guys like that little quick tip I had for you about cutting drywall. It is very efficient. Um, so for this next process, now that I got everything cut, I am now screwing in all of the drywall pieces to the door side of the vocal booth. Now that I got the door installed and it opens and closed perfectly, I can go ahead and put those pieces on. I will then put the insulation on the inside and then screw on the back side of the drywall after that. All right, so hopefully you guys just saw that time lapse of me uh, drilling in these top and side pieces of the drywall uh, in the front of the vocal booth by the door. So, you know, it came out real good. It looks real nice, as you guys can see. The top is real smooth, and so are the sides. They look very good on there. Let me get a little closer look on here. It came out real cool. The only trouble I had right here uh, was this side because there's the little there's a little trim right here from the door so it was hard to wedge behind there and then make it flush with this door frame um, but I got it figured out I just used this little mallet right here hit it in there and uh, yeah now it's all nice and snug got the top on there worked out real smooth that was real snug in there too the booth is coming out real clean can't wait uh, for you guys to see the end result you know so here's just another look of the booth Here's the front that I just got finished doing. For the most part though, it's pretty clean. There's just a few little gaps like on that little corner. And I think uh, right there on that little corner, but it's nothing too, too major. Just little small gaps I can fill in. And then on top of this, I'm gonna be putting stone over it. So you're not even gonna see any of the flaws or imperfections. So I'm gonna have this stone type of like backsplash almost all over the whole front and side of it. It's gonna be real cool, but uh, you guys will see that towards the end. All right, so that pretty much wraps it up for part two of this DIY home studio build. If you haven't already, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell notification so you can be notified when I drop part three of this build. Be part of that JHP family. You already know what the deal is, man. Y'all stay blessed. We'll be back soon. Just wait on it. I'm out.